had enough of the DS lights for now. Got a 3DS. So I've been told it doesn't charge. It makes a beautiful hissing noise. It's got to get over the noise. Let's check if it charges. Nothing. Got it open and now we're concerned. Missing screws, someone's been in it before. Let's get the whole board out and see what it's like. And we have the board out. The coil's looking pretty, pretty suspicious. It should not be broken like that. We've had to do coils before on the DS lights. Let's assume it's Probably very similar. Let's see what it tests like under the multimeter. It should be from here to here. We should be getting a buzz. From here to here. Also nothing for reference. There, there's one. This is our donor board, so you can see. Not a liar. Beeps that way, that way. Not this way. Not this way. That one's good, let's let's swap them over. Yeah, I'm just gonna redo the solder on the charger port while I'm here. Yeah, even though there's no battery, the charge light should come on. Yes, there we go. What we're looking for is the noise. Please be gone. Ah. Another top half assembly. I'm gonna dump it in this one and see what it does. We're in the blue blue frame. According to the interwebs, this chip here is the one responsible for the sound. I'm just going to probe this area with the multimeter and see if any of these things give off a different reading compared to our donor board. So after probing the area with the multimeter, the only thing that really stood out and gave me a different reading was this little cap here. In diode mode, it was off by about 200, so I'm going to swap that, see if it does anything. If not, move on to the next bit, which is probably going to be replacing the chip. I don't know. I've never encountered this problem. Alright, this console's giving me some curry, so let's uh, take a quick break to talk about the best 3D printing company in the world, PCBWay. Are you ready to revolutionise your 3D printing process with PCBWay's state-of-the-art 3D printing services? Precision meets speed as their cutting-edge technology transforms your visions into reality. From small projects to large ones, they deliver unparalleled quality with every print. Whether you're a startup entrepreneur or a seasoned industry leader, unlock unlimited possibilities with PCBWay. Say goodbye to long lead times and hello to rapid results. With their expert team and advanced machinery, your projects are in safe hands. Now, even if you're not after any 3D printed stuff, they also have a web store which stocks awesome tools, toys, and merch, so there is something for everyone. There will be links in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. So given that capacitor did bugger all for me, I'm removing the chip now off the donor board. We're gonna try and reball this chip. Keeping in mind, I've never reballed a chip in my life before, so this could be a disaster. <laughs> 121 balls on this chip. I'm starting at a 0.45 millimeter ball. I don't know if that's right. <coughs> and those balls started touching Bruh. way too hard, so I've abandoned that one. We've done it again. 121 balls in 0.4 millimeter ball size. Come on. Oh, you little bitches. <coughs> Had a few that bridged on that chip, so we're gonna clean the chip off and we're gonna try again. Again, I've never re-bought anything. I'm trying to do it by hand, no stencil. 0.4 millimeter ball, they're freaking tiny, man. So here we go, once again, come on. I did get another bridge down the bottom right corner this time, but this one being on the corner, I'm gonna use my desoldering braid. Hopefully we can just remove those four, redo those four rather than trying to do all 121 again because holy smokes, it takes a bit of time and patience to do this. Got some new balls lined up. Hopefully with a bit of flux, they will just 
flow and just flow straight into position. The other ones are all readjusting. It's looking pretty good. I think we might be all right. Third time's a charm. Fourth time, fifth time. I don't remember how many times I did this. Look at that. I think, I think it's good. I'm gonna remove the one from the noisy device now. Hopefully this makes a difference. Otherwise I've wasted a few hours trying to reboot that chip, I reckon. Potentially a bit too reckless with removing and cleaning that because I've lost two pads. Luckily those pads don't actually connect to anything, they just thought they're ground ones. I am going to put little replacement pads in place because I've got the balls on the chip and I want those balls to have something to stick to. So I'm just applying a bit of solder mask to the back of the pad and then sticking the pad in place. Moment of truth, we're heating the new one up, putting it in place. Seems to be all good, it did its little flux dance. Let's find out. Well, I don't really know where to go with this thing from here, so if anyone does know what the hell is making it make that gargling TV static sound? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, I'm gonna put it to the side, maybe revisit it in the future if I can work anything out for it. Like, subscribe, share, whatever. Until next time.